Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my fourth video on the Node.js microservices world where we are talking almost everything about microservices. So in the last videos we talked about uh, baseline code and then we were talking about the, the core agenda what we are going to cover. So we are targeting uh, these two stuff like okay express with the Node.js, express TypeScript with the Node.js or Nest.js uh, with the Node.js. This is like a technology to build the services. But before that, uh, I mean, I'm starting this playlist from uh, ground zero and a lot of people are expecting me to cover some basic stuff. But I already have a two major playlist primarily on the microservices, Nest.js microservices and uh, mm -hmm. simple microservices using Express. This is the third playlist which we are talking. So I will talk about some core aspects also, like what is a microservice? So when you talk about a simple service, how you define it? So let's say if I talk about simple service. So how you define it? It's like a, some backend uh, server side logic which you are executing to change the state of the data based on the client request or based on the request coming from another service. So there can be a service to service communication right or service to client or simply there is a client who is requesting you for some update and then there is a service who is there to serve the request so service to service is like a system to system client to service let's say from chrome there is a ui app that is making an xhr request api request and that is going to hit some request either rest or GraphQL or SOAP based services and updating the system state. That's a service, right? So that is the actual definition of service. Service is just a minimal or any server side logic based on the request coming from another external service or internal service or from the client. Someone is triggering something to execute and that is changing the state. Now, whoever is executing is authorized or not, that's a different topic. Now, this service can be anything. I mean, in our definition, when we talk about this type of services, what are these services? In our uh, logical world, this service is nothing but an interface. This service is, let's say, this service is running as a 24-7 HTTP server right so i mean there is a physical server you have somewhere on the aws and azure that is exposing that can expose lots of different interface like soap based interface which is web services it's little legacy but still people use it or rest full based interface where you can actually do http get put post right get put post and update the state of the data and or you can actually expose a GraphQL based interface where you are going to do HTTP post with query and mutation. Or now there are other interfaces are also available with the protocols gRPC, tRPC or TCP based interface. So this also lies on HTTP protocol. I mean, the communication still happens on HTTP protocol. But these are the different interfaces, uh, uh, server side logic, which is executing. Now you can think about, okay, there is a, you have created an express based app, which is exposing 5000 port, right? And running on some physical server, which whose IP is this? right so it is exposing some either rest interface graphql interface or trpc grpc interface mm -hmm. you can access that interface using a browser client or maybe another service client or something right so that is a service now that service when that service will become a microservice you might have done a simple express node.js app and hosted that on either heroku aws digital ocean or somewhere 
that is a service but when that service will become microservice that is an important point right so that we are going to talk about because when you build a complex systems i am not talking about okay simple where you are just doing a simple user cred okay user cred you can just define a simple service doing a rest api graphql interface and providing you the create insert update delete methods okay now here we are talking about microservice so what is the microservice by the definition i mean there are many definitions but a simple definition is uh microservice is nothing but uh, as known as a microservice is nothing but a simple service which is independently deployable loosely coupled and organized around the business capabilities okay there is a defined boundary for that service owned by a small team so here i wanted to talk about this thing i mean i can build this whole system into a one single monolith service where i'm doing managing the orders delivery consumer service tracking of the items all those things or what i can do i can create individual services which are doing only order which are doing only delivery which are doing only consumer service and they know nothing about each other they are completely independently deployable there is a different teams are uh, managing them they are loosely coupled means they don't know about anything they can know um, based on the events let's say i i send a order created event to the delivery because now you need to prepare the delivery for that order so they know nothing about each other they understand the events coming from the individual services they are totally loosely coupled okay and they are exposing some interface to the client like rest graphql or maybe trpc grpc some specific interface now we are not uh, so stick to one set of technologies okay you are just exposing rest you can do graphql also and then there is a client going to send query and mutation okay so microservices uh, in the node js world first of all they are deployable and whatever they are doing uh, they they should be capable enough to do that and they should not have a shared database that means delivery service has its own data own database order service has its own data own database there should be no dependency or coupling even for the data there should be no sharing of data i mean there may be if there is a case but uh, when you know that delivery has nothing to do with the ordering i mean the data can be segregated yes they need to communicate by some means that's a different thing so that becomes uh, a microservice and microservices again nothing but a simple uh, you can create a when you are creating because in a microservice word is a hype and people get often confused you can just create a simple express rest apis express node js rest apis deployed somewhere which is just doing authentication it is having auth logic which will just validate your okay your username password or email password and it will give you the access token which has some expiry so that because that can become an individual service right so once you get the access token you can access your external apis or internal apis and you can validate okay this token is valid through this service so this can be a microservice because this can be independently deployable it has nothing to do with any other service not knowing other services it's totally decoupled and it has its own own data storage these are the the primary things which you need to have when you are building a microservices for any complex system let's say if i'm building this urban clap buying service online for the anything for the electrician for the carpenter or plumber i mean these are the services which are available on the urban clap and we are building the clone of it then i should be able to build a simple auth service or either uh, i'm using the auth zero or external auth provider but whatever i'm doing that service that should be totally decoupled with uh, the whole interface it may be providing you the token access token that you can use to further authorized against the other service apis but it's deployable not knowing other services it it may know but it doesn't need to call or make any external api call it should be totally decoupled you can communicate through the events but okay you will not be making any external direct http interface at http calling because we want this service to be totally decoupled
from other interface hedge hedge its own user data user data user preference data and user settings system settings all those things you can store in this authentication app so when it comes to designing or deploying these services they should be totally independent container or independent service independent ecs container or independent lambda that does only authentication mm -hmm. even for if you want to send an email let's say i have this service that is doing authentication okay even if you want to send an email when user is successfully being created in the system so here for the email we might write a simple notification service or any kind of external interface not the authentication service won't be sending the email because then you need a tracking okay let's say i am sending email right and i may the, the email delivery may also fail right so we may need a retry mechanism and we need to track what all the email addresses where the email has not been sent so it's all together an external service which requires all these logics you may have a, some kind of a retry mechanism in this email service so all those things are not part of authentication service so that's why we need to create a decoupled email notification service or simple generic notification service which takes care of email notification or maybe mobile messages or all kind of external notifications and they can also take care of uh, retry and delivery mechanism so that will won't be a part of authentication service so this is how we define the business boundaries and this is how we create a decoupled service now authentication and email service are totally decoupled once user does the successful sign up we can send a event so this service knows only the event which needs to be sent when the sign up is successful or when you created your account successfully right so that events needs to be handled by the email notification service so this is the event handler service based on this event they will send a notification to the defined email id or a mobile number right so this is how you create a decoupled architecture or decoupled event driven services and these services can be created either just using simple node js express type script or nest js type script that we are going to decide okay so first of all we will see how to create a tiny service which can expose a different kind of interface so the interface can be simply rest uh, graphql okay grpc or trpc but these all are synchronous interface that means when this service is sending uh, when there is a request coming let's say i'm talking about this auth service and this is a client when the request is coming from this service to this authentication service this is all purely synchronous because you might be sending a request on http protocol right then you are expecting a response back immediately till the http timeout happens right so you send a username password authentication service will validate and it will send you the response back so this is synchronous request and reply this kind of service but there may be a scenario like this where we can send an email over the time because email delivery is doesn't need to be immediate it can happen over the time in that particular case you will be dealing with the event driven system or sending the event to a target service which can execute once the event is received in the target service right so for all those services these are not synchronous these are async async services and this is async communication and for these kind of communications you can use uh, emqp protocol or uh, 
I mean, you will be using all these event driven mechanism. You can use a Kafka to send an event or a RabbitMQ to send an event. And this email service in a loop will listening to that particular Kafka topic or a broker queue and will get the message. OK, OK, I got this event and I will just process it. So this is not something which is exposing the HTTP interface. But this is because HTTP interface means it is going to take the request and send you the response back. And this authentication service can be built either using REST, GraphQL, gRPC, TRPC interface or TCP. All will be synchronous request and reply. You send a request and they need to respond back. So these are message driven, right? Because you send a request and reply, but these are fire and forget you send a event you don't even know where you are sending the event you are just sending the event to some communication channel or messaging queue there will be a reader or you can say subscriber to that uh, communication channel like email service which is asynchronously will read that event and then will process that so this is asynchronous communication you can say event driven communication this is request and reply synchronous communication that happens right now you need to respond and there are different interfaces available. You can write in the RESTful, web services, SOAP based services, GraphQL, gRPC, TRPC, or a TCP based interface it can expose. Okay, so this is what uh, the whole architecture and different architecture patterns evolves around all these things. The communication protocol, communication type, what is the interface is being exposed from the service. These are the services. This is the UI client browser. This is uh, a service to service event driven communication there will be a ui client sitting here doing authentication okay i will do it like this because this is the same thing so we are talking about this auth service here right you send a request from the ui client and now auth will send an event to this email notification service we can just put these arrows to here I mean, this is the event which is going further like this. I mean, you can skip the arrows part. I don't want it to repeat the boxes again. Yeah, so let's talk about uh, building these request and reply based uh, services first, which are independently deployable, decoupled. You can talk about simple any microservice which we need to build this SaaS based platform. And then we will see how we can add these 12 factor principles to build an independent service. And then how we will achieve this decoupling between services.